Welcome to Coffee Monday. We are going to do some book talks because, as some of you might know, we are heading into our winter reading program soon. So this year for adults, we do still have some mugs left. So even if you've gotten them before, if River Forest card holders sign up, um, you can get another coffee mug and there might be a little something inside if you do. Uh, and then we have a large raffle that every book you log counts as a raffle ticket. And we wanted to be sure to support local businesses during these challenging times. So this year's raffle prize is a $50 gift card to the Shop Local um, Endeavor from the Oak Park River Forest Chamber of Commerce. So that is the, the fun prize. It works at a lot of local places. So, um, you know, it, I think it would be stores you would enjoy and we hopefully then can help our, our neighbors out. Megan, could you could you tell us who at some point who uh, got the various prizes in the fall? Oh sure, I yeah I will uh, I can pull it up and let you know. I don't know off the top. I don't remember off the top of my head okay. who the winners were, yeah. but we can definitely share that with you. So the first book I wanted to mention is In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. Um, this one came out and was marketed as a rom-com, but what I really loved most about it is that it really wasn't what I would describe as a rom-com. Um, it started out with the premise that felt like it would be one. Uh, a woman is getting engaged. They go out to a fancy dinner. Uh, they go home. She falls asleep, and she either dreams or wakes up five years in her future. She's with a totally different man living in a different place. She is trying to figure out what's going on, and then she either wakes up from her dream or falls back into her present timeline. And then you move along as the story catches up with that five-year-ahead snapshot that we saw. And what I loved about it is that it really wasn't the story you thought it was telling. So it sort of seemed like it was going to be this kind of quirky romantic comedy of her finding this new guy and getting in the new relationship, and I don't want to spoil it, so I won't dive into what exactly it is, but it really um, has different themes that are a little more poignant, um, especially in regards to friendship. And it's very rare these days that I have a book that surprises me. So when it, when it took a different direction, that's always exciting for me. I know a lot of you are avid readers as well, so I hope you like when um, a book does surprise you. That's always kind of noteworthy in my opinion. So I would, I really loved that one. It was fun and enjoyable, but it also had a little more um, depth to it than I was anticipating. However, if you think that means I'm not a fan of rom-coms, I definitely want to clear up. I love the lighthearted, you know, um, quick reads as well. This was my favorite rom-com of the year, Boyfriend Material, and I would recommend this to any fans of Bridget Jones. It is another, um, quirky British protagonist who, you know, sort of is self-deprecating and is a little bit of a mess, but he's really endearing and he um, meets sort of a, a stuffy, uptight a barrister that he begins to date who, you know, the dynamic is very similar to Bridget Jones, uh, but a little more modern telling and it was a lot of fun. I loved it. It was my favorite rom-com of the year. So I would recommend that to people looking for that type of story. Um, switching gears here a bit, there was a book that I thought didn't get as much coverage as maybe it would have in other times, uh, just because of the large amount of books talking about cultural differences throughout the country that came out this year. This one is more like um, getting that information, uh, you know, as Mary Poppins likes to say, with a spoonful of sugar. Colin Quinn has a really fun approach where he sort of gives a gentle teasing to each state as he moves through. However, it has um, some interesting points that he makes about how the different cultural groups don't necessarily listen to each other very well these days and might be misunderstanding each other while also teasing everyone about their own, um, you know, quirks as well. So I really enjoyed that one. I thought it was a lot of fun. And he, I thought he had some interesting things to say about the cultural dynamics going on. 
Uh, this year also had a lot of political reads, so I kind of lumped them all together in case anybody is, <laughs> is interested in these. These were all ones I enjoyed, with the slight exception of one of these is not out yet. The Out of Many One by George Bush is coming out next March. Uh, if you remember the book he did where he painted veterans for, um, you know, to help the charitable causes for them and, and tell their stories, this one he's doing the same thing with immigrants to the country. So he interviewed a bunch of them, painted their portraits again, and again, it's a, another charitable uh, endeavor, and he's really shining a light on the contributions of immigrants to our country and their personal stories and challenges and joy and um, so that one's coming out next March. I have not seen it yet. It, uh, it seems like it'll be a good one, so I, I included it there. But the rest I read and enjoyed. Um, Everything Beautiful in Its Time is focused on uh, George Bush Sr. It is told for, by Jenna Bush Hager, who you might know from, I believe she's on um, the Today Show uh, these days. But if you liked Sisters First, the book she wrote, uh, a couple years ago with her sister, it's very similar in that it has a lot of family stories about the Bushes and lessons they've learned while also giving you an inside peek into how things were going behind the scenes during some of these powerful moments in their lives. Um, I also really liked Pete Buttigieg's Trust. That one was not only sharing his perspective, if you like him, but it also really delved into the larger story of the institutions of the country and how to restore trust in politicians, government, institutions, all of these things that um, seem to, you know, people seem to have lost that trust in many of those things these days. And he is talking about why it's important to bring it back and how to get there. And he had some really insightful things to say. It's, uh, it's not a long book, so it also is one if you want to dive in, but not necessarily have it fill up all your time, that one's a good option. On the other hand, Barack Obama's book was about 700 pages, so that is the one to go to if you want a deep dive into the last few years, um, both his thinking as he moved through things and some behind the scenes peeks at the dynamics and, and events that were going on and, and how he decided um, what he did in different times. I will warn you, this one is also, even though it's 700 pages, it is the first of three books. So it does not take you through his entire presidency. It takes you up to a point, and then there will be two more carrying on the rest of the story. In case you wanted to have a little bit of a lighter approach to it, uh, I had a lot of fun reading Sex with Presidents, which is all about sex scandals of various presidents throughout history. Um, there is a lot of scandal that happened. <laughs> so each, uh, each administration that had these scandals gets its own chapter. And um, it is interesting to see these common sort of themes or approaches and different eras reactions to these different scandals. Uh, it was really fascinating, especially from the eras where maybe the media wouldn't cover the scandal as it was unfolding. So it really is something people learned about more later on. Um, team of Five was really focused on the last uh, five former presidents and sort of their dynamics, their unspoken rules amongst themselves, how they still try to contribute after leaving such a, an important job where everyone is really looking to them. And then all of a sudden, they're not really officially in charge of anything. And so they have a whole interesting dynamic of how they still are sort of tapped in and help each other, but also, you know, uh, how it is very different from their former roles and their dynamics between themselves and and how it is all um, unfolding with the current president as well, his relationship with many of them. So um, a lot of great political reads this year. I, uh, I It'll be interesting to see if maybe with the election now ending, if we will switch gears next year or if that will continue. But there were a lot of good ones that I wanted to recommend. If you're more interested in history through a fictional lens, and um, less focused on specific individual people. There is uh, the Book of Lost Names I really enjoyed. It starts with um, a librarian uh, who is elderly. I don't remember her exact age. 
she's working in a library and she stumbles across an article about these books that were found throughout history that have codes in them. And there is one book that has a code no one has been able to crack. They're really fascinated by it and they really want to figure it out. And she actually has the answers uh, because it was her former book. And so then it tells the story going back to World War II of um, her efforts uh, and to help those dealing with the Holocaust. And um, it, it's a really great story. Uh, you know, it, it really beautifully shines a light on kind of everyday people who maybe don't always get written up in the history books, but who made such huge contributions to people and communities over the years. It, it, it was really lovely. I would recommend that one. Um, if you don't want something so heavy and you want a lighter read, I really liked Lindy West's most recent book. It's, I would say it's sort of a movie review guide for people who don't take movies or reviews all that seriously. It's really more humorous essays about different movies. Um, her favorite movie is The Fugitive. So she ranks every movie in terms of how many DVDs of The Fugitive she thinks it would earn. So it is really kind of silly and a lot of fun and just a quick read. Um, each movie gets its own essay. So if there's one you haven't watched that you just want to skip over, you can, however, I will say I even enjoyed reading about ones I haven't watched because it was just a lot of fun to get her take uh, on, you know, various movies who maybe don't normally get a critical review because they're a little sillier or a, a, um, a little more action based or something. Uh, and then I also really loved Roddy Doyle's Love that came out this year. It explores the story of two 60 year old men who meet in a pub to catch up. They were childhood friends. Um, and it really explores male friendship, aging, love, family, and memory. It is really poignant in the end. It moves through the evening mostly in dialogue, uh, but you kind of catch up on what's going on in their lives through the course of the night. And it has a really, um, really powerful ending. So I really enjoyed that one. And this was the DVD I could not um, leave out. The Grant miniseries is now available on DVD, so if you don't get the History Channel or if you do but you missed it the first time around, you can get it from the library now. It is the story of Grant primarily through the Civil War, but really uh, it does give you before and after as well. And I just thought it was packed full of information, um, but it was really gripping, really beautifully shot, really well done. So I really wanted to be sure to mention that even though it's not a book. Um, and with that, I would love to turn it over to the group to see if anybody else had any more they wanted to mention. I know Ruth mentioned the um, Ferrante book uh, that, is, that is out now. Uh, does anybody else have any they wanted to share? And it could be books, movies, podcasts, whatever. To that. Oh, okay. Nobody else had any. 